All right. Well, I decided I needed to make a new video, um, one that focuses on some stuff that really uh, helps you get everything organized. And so today we're going to make a quick, I guess I would call it an addendum video, um, layers. This is the way to organize all of the stuff in your map. Um, so if you notice, the first thing that we need to do is we need to go to Window, which brings up all these little individual windows. And I've actually already selected my Layers window, and you can see, oh no, I just turned it off. Okay, Layers, we'll go back on. You can see it's over here. Um, and actually, I already have it set up a little bit. Um, I'm going to throw this layer away. Um, and so now we're just starting fresh. We've got one layer, which you can see here, is shown here um, by this blue line. And that layer is our base map. So we've talked about bringing all these other things into our map, right? We've talked about, you know, the field map and then, you know, how, how we build that digitally. So I'm going to do that just like we learned in the last video, but I'm actually going to go ahead and just use layers. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go over here with my cursor. You can see I'm in the layers menu. And I'm going to highlight this icon. It looks like a page turning. Create new layer. I'm going to do that. So that's shown here as layer two. Notice that this has got a blue line here and this has a red line. Anything that's on layer two is going to be selected with a red kind of highlight or a red bounding box where previously it was just blue. I'll show you what I mean here in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and um, open my base map. Let's see, where does my base map live? Uh, da, 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 da. I think I put it in here. No, maybe I did not. Chili Buttes, Geo 2017. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and open this base map. Um, and here it's in its own window, so I'm going to control and copy. So now I have my base map on the clipboard. And notice that in the layers menu, I have layer two highlighted. And so I'm going to control and V. I'm going to paste my base map in here. And notice that as I click and drag, this actually now has a red bounding box rather than a blue one like it had done before. And so I know anything on layer two is going to highlight red. Um, additionally, you know, it's, it's, it's a problem if we kind of click and start selecting different layers. So my favorite thing to do is if you look at this next box, this is an eyeball symbol. So that's your visibility. But the box next to that has a, a padlock symbol. And that when that's selected, you can't mess with that layer. So I'm going to go ahead and put the padlock. I'm going to lock my base map. And then now I'm going to modify my field map. So first thing I want to do is turn the opacity down a little bit so I can help get it um, oriented correctly. So let's see. There's that road intersection up there. Let's see. Get that dialed in. Looks like my registration marks are lined up here. Maybe a little bit down there. Let's see, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Oh, now I'm not feeling good. Let me get it back there. Yeah, I've got a registration mark here and here. So I'm feeling really good about my, about my field map. And so I want to go ahead and start drawing my map. Um, and again, I'm going to want to do that on a different layer. So um, what I would do right now, I would turn the opacity back up so I can just see my field map, because that's really what I'm going to be concerned about. And I'm going to add a new layer. I'm going to go ahead and lock my field map. So now my field map and my base map layers are locked. Um, and this new layer, layer three, is fluorescent green. So any um, any item that I draw on that layer is going to be green. So look here, you can see I've got that nice green um, bounding box for my shape that I just drew. Okay, so I'm going to start doing um, I'm going to do some pretty basic stuff here. Let's chop our uh, chop our map up. I'm going to go pretty fast just because, you know, we, we've talked about kind of the technical skill of how to do this prior. So I'm going to go ahead and get my, where's my pencil? It's always hiding over here. 
pencil, pencil, pencil. There we go. There's pencil tool. So I'm going to do my quaternary contact here first. Shoop, boop, 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 boop. Okay, looks like that's closed off. Again, using some skills we've talked about before, I now chopped those open, ungrouped them. So I have this funky little thing in there. I'm going to grab my pencil again, trace these contacts as close as I can. Again, I'm being fairly quick. I would uh, normally zoom in and take a little bit more time to make sure that I'm really drawing what I intend to and that my digital tracing is um, as precise as possible. But like I said, we're going pretty quick here. So I'm going to go ahead and um, chop up that little piece. So there it's chopped up, ungrouped, and let's change some colors here. So we can make, this is our lower limestone, we'll make it color. This was our conglomerate. I like conglomerate, oh no, I like conglomerates to be green, I don't know why. But we'll put a green layer there. This is a carbonate, so it's going to be blue. Oh, my selections aren't doing right. There, blue, and looks like I got my last one. A different shade of blue. And so I've got, I'm starting to have quite a few layers piled up on one another. But again, if you always want to go back and see what this looks like digitally, remember there are these eyeball icons here. Those are layer visibility. So I can turn off the base map and actually even turn off the field map and see what my work looks like so far. So here is how I'm doing. Oh, I don't like my color choices. I'm going to modify those. I want that guy to be green. Let's see this one. We'll go ahead and do. Oh, it was also carbonate, so it can be it can be blue as well. So now I have my quaternary units are out here in, in yellow and then my different colors and so on. Um, but I'm still missing a lot, right? So one of the things that I don't have is the unit contacts. So here I just have some different colors. Um, contacts are a little bit tricky. So I'm going to show you the way that I like to do them. I'm basically going to take um, this whole layer. So remember, these are locked. I'm going to do control A, which is select all and copy. And then I'm going to actually do a new layer and freeze that layer. Um, and so now I've pasted a new version on there, right? So we can, we'll just have um, our layer four that we're looking at. And actually, um, before I get too carried away, maybe it's a good idea to go back to my layers and um, actually label them properly. So there is my field map. Layer three, this is going to be the fill. So remember the color within a polygon, that's the fill of a unit. Um, and then layer four, this is going to be just the contacts. So um, now having layer four be just the contacts, I'm going to go ahead and select the whole thing. All of my other layers have this padlock symbol, so they're not going to be selected. I'm actually going to turn off all of the color. And oops. Um, and I'm going to give them all a black stroke of one point. So now it's a little bit better. We've got some unit contacts. But there's definitely a few things we know. And we've practiced this actually already. So for this unit, I know that just this portion right here is going to be that normal fault that we were interested in. Um, so I'm going to do a couple of things here. I'm going to um, grab the scissors and I'm going to cut this thing up. So now I actually can pull off just those contacts. Right? If you see how I do that. Um, and then the layers below again, are going to have that same path. So I could go back to thinking about what visibility means. Remember, I could turn off this layer 
and the colors live here and the contacts live on this layer that I'm working on. So I could go ahead and make this um, a double a double heavy line. I could also <coughs> excuse me, you know, add any any fault decorations or anything like that that I might be interested in doing. So now I've got this line that's a little bit heavier. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and bump that up a little bit more just so that we're all uh, that it's all really easy to see. Let's see. One thing to be careful of is when you do these layers, your context layer should be at 100% opacity and your fill is going to be lower, right? So if we go back and just turn on our base map, we can see the topography through, through the unit fill, but the unit contexts themselves are still black. It's a little bit of a tricky thing to do, but again, um, if you ask me about it or, or I can kind of help you through email. Um, so we're kind of running out a little of time here. What I wanted to do is um, recreate some of the other things that we're going to do on this map, right? So I'm going to go ahead and lock my contacts layer and I'm going to turn on, um, I'm going to turn actually off my base map and turn on my field map and I'm going to zoom in here and I need to have my strike and dip symbols, my data layers. Oops. So getting ahead of myself here. So I'm going to add a new layer here. This one's magenta, beautiful. And this is going to be data. So now I can go ahead and add, you know, strike and dip symbol. Um, that stroke is way too thick. So we'll go down to a one point stroke. Um, We'll build our little strike and dip symbol here. I usually do it uh, using this method, the align method. Looks like, I think that, there we go. There's a good one. Control G, group it, and that makes this one nice unit. And then we've talked about already how you're going to go ahead and, and calculate these. Um, you rotate them using the rotation tool. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to revisit that, but I'm going to go back and actually just kind of casually put a few of these in here that um, that match some of the ones that we would see, or some of the ones that are on this base map here. So just grab a few of these as we're marching along. Let's see, we'll go ahead and put one out here. Again, you guys learned in a different video you know, how to do this very precisely. Well, all right, so I've got a few data points on here. And I would actually argue that these the dip symbols are backwards on these just because I know these rocks. And I think this uh, field map has a pretty egregious error. Okay, so I'm going to flip those around. I'm going to back back out again. And at this point, we can do the same kind of check we've done before. We can turn off our field map and turn on our base map and see that now we have some data points. And obviously, I would go ahead and put the um, I would put the dip magnitudes there. We can do that really quickly. Whoa. So I could put Man, that's a pretty big font, huh? We don't need that. So I would go down here. Yeah, nine point font. Um, I think these are bold. I don't need them to be bold. And I would go ahead and put that number next to my dip, just like so. We've seen that in a different video. Um, and then kind of continuing on, you can do as many different layers as possible as you would like. Um, I always think it's nice to have a titles and labels. So you can at that point put in, you know, geologic map. Geologic map of Southern Chile Butte. Um, that's probably, oh, that makes, that feels good. 21 point font. Oh, looks like got a capitalization error there. Um, and then also, you know, you can put in your, um, little colored boxes where you'll have your unit symbols. Um, 
and so on.